Здравствуйте, товарищи, and I'm very proud to introduce to you guys a new series that I'm going to try and do, and that is me going from a okay gold level player in StarCraft Heart of the Swarm, obviously, to a Masters. My goal is to do it within one month, and to help me out here, I've uh, recruited someone who I'm, you know, very proud to introduce to you guys. I'm, you know, excited to be working with this guy. I've been watching his YouTube stuff for a little while, and um, he's, uh, his name is uh, Rekatan, and you're one of, like, the top, what was it, 75 Zerg players in North America? Oh, that yeah, from my website. That was a while back. Um, okay. These days, when my MM, when my uh, bleh, when my bonus pool is spent, I'm probably in the top fifty. Um, should be grandmaster next season. This season, I didn't lock it down, even though I was at sixty six percent win rate. So okay. I'm kind of angry about that. But. I thought you were in grandmaster. I was in the Heart of the Swarm beta, which was really funny because that was when we had a bunch of Koreans in the MMR. Oh wow! But yeah, they decided to troll me on the NA ladder for some reason. So. Like 100 games played at 66% win rate didn't get me in. Well, that's a shame. But yeah. uh, anyway, he's good. Long story short, uh, he's good. I've seen his play. It's, uh, I mean, you. I, I saw that one game where you, you were facing Huck and you almost beat him. I'm like, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> like, you had it. I was like, well, I got, oh, you had it. And I walked into those storms and <laughs> I just, like, my heart sank through the floor. It was yeah. like I just lost a GSL because I'm just like, did I seriously almost beat Huck? <laughs> you were so, it was so close. Uh, it was heartbreaking. But anyway, so super cool guy. Uh, how about you spend some time to, you know, uh, plug where people can find you and, uh, you know, what kind of other stuff you might uh, you might do besides uh, YouTubing and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so you can find my uh, YouTube channel uh, at, at uh, YouTube slash Rekaton. And uh, there will probably be links uh, in the in the YouTube video that you're watching, so you'll be able to see it there. Also, I uh, stream at twitch.tv slash Rekaton. And then you can follow me at Rek Starcraft. Um, as to what I do, I'm, I'm a part-time Starcraft player. I still would like to go pro, but, uh, you know, as long as I can continue helping people up their game and continue making some fun videos, that's, that's really all I want. Um, work full-time uh, for software development company, and uh, other than that, uh, that's that's pretty much all the time I've got in my life. I did once upon a time play uh, full time and coach full time for a living, but uh, these days I actually play a lot better part time. So I think that that says something. So oh, interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, this is going to be a recurring segment, and by me learning something through these sessions, I hope that you, the viewer, will also learn a thing or two, and we can all grow and uh, learn and experience new things together. That is my hope. But. Uh, <laughs> We'll see how things go. Anyway, let's get this ball rolling here and uh, tell me what, oh, you know, Grandmaster, what the hell do I need to do first? <laughs> okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do, and this is going to, oh, actually, let me change my audio Oops. level because mm -hmm. my game volume is way too loud. Okay. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, and this is uh, going to hurt, but uh, go ahead and go to your options menu. So we're going to go to F10 and options. Okay. And we're going to go to hotkeys. Oh, hold on. I've lost my... There it is. All right. Uh, options, hotkeys. Here we go. You're going to go to global. Can't All wait right. to hear your reaction here. Go ahead and open up unit management. Unit management. Okay. See select army units? Uh, Where is that? There it is. Select army units. Yeah, F2. And, yeah, and go ahead and unbind that uh, that hotkey. Okay, you, you want me... Okay. Make sure it doesn't exist anymore. Yep, you're going to click the X and then go ahead and click OK to save. All right, well. <laughs> I know, I know. So when I was watching your replays, the one thing that stuck is I was like, wait, he's not control grouping his units. What is this? <sighs> and as a, as a Wings of Liberty player, it was just like boggling my mind because I have never once used that F2 key. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I played Wings of Liberty as well. And then when the... Uh, I played the campaign. I'm like, oh, we've got a buy, like a select whole army. I'm like, that's awesome. That's <laughs> great. And that's what I used. So here's the thing, Blizzard. They're trying to make the game more approachable, but they did all players a huge disservice by adding that because it's such a big crutch. Okay. Um. So we removed that because you're gonna quit cold turkey today. Oh. Okay. So uh, it'll, it'll <laughs> be back like in Wings of Liberty. 
yeah, and and so if you accidentally press F two, well, you're going to get instant feedback because your units aren't selected. Um, so for for the first couple games, we're going to go ahead and just get in the habit of again. You probably did this back in Wings, just putting everything on one control group. Yes, sometimes I, I would have like infestors and stuff on another control group. You know, the the casting okay. type of units. Okay, so you have done that before. That's good. Yeah. I was I was concerned that maybe you. Uh, came on and started playing regularly with with Heart of the Swarm, and you've never actually ex worked with control groups, and that would have been really spooky. But okay. um, this is a little better, so that's fine. You can go up to two control groups, but the one thing is we're going to actually shrink down your unit pool a bit today. Okay. So here's the units you're going to be allowed to use in all three matchups, um, and this is just going to be until our next lesson, and we'll, then we're going to gradually start adding units. All right, sounds good. So you can use Zerglings, Banelings, Roaches, Hydras, Mutas, and Corruptors. And so no, like, casting units, no more yeah. finicky units like the Swarm Host or anything like that. Right. Just basic Zerg army. And no Tier 3 whatsoever. When okay. you go Tier 3, you're going that, you're going to that stage for upgrades exclusively. Okay. And this is going to do something to your play that I think is really important at gold level because you're at that kind of precipice where you understand macro, but you don't necessarily always execute it. It's not consistent. And the, the commonality with all those units I just mentioned is they all require you to have a macro advantage to secure the game. Okay. So down the road, we're going to kind of earn the right to go macro or go micro oriented. But um, the consistent thing I saw is, when, you know, when you made infestors, you would have like 16 of them versus 10. <laughs> and only three of them were getting their energy used. Okay. And because of that F2, a lot of them were just A moving into the uh, opponent's army. So this really is going to um, kind of throw you for a loop, but I think it's going to really pay off. Now, I'd like to start by actually, um, let's play one game, and then we're going to do resume from re replay from that point forward. Okay, against you? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> I will be your opponent, but here's the thing. is I'm The way I've always coached is I play as the opponent, okay. but I try to kind of tone back the play. Um, as an I as a general rule of thumb, if, if if you win, I probably did something wrong. I didn't gauge the game well enough. My yeah. goal is to play at just a little bit above your level. So I'm gonna be shooting for a mid platinum, maybe low diamond level. Okay. And it's gonna force you up. When you go on the ladder, it's gonna be easier because you have been playing at a higher level. Okay. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get the game going and then we'll see what we see from there. But this first game is just to kind of gauge how things have changed just from those limitations I gave you. So, yeah, just trying to, trying to make sure. Uh, just no tier 3 units, no caster units, basic Zerg army type of deal. Yeah. Oh, and then no swarm host as well. Question. Um, what is your best uh, queen selection injection method? I use uh, all queens on 5 throughout okay. the course of the entire game, and I alternate between just scrolling around with a really high mouse scroll speed and um, backspace injection. Okay. I changed that hotkey to my... Uh, I've got like a bunch of buttons on my mouse. It's like mouse button four or something. So I'm going to see how that works. Excellent. Yeah. 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 And I actually have a um, backspace injection guide on my YouTube for anyone who's interested. It um, kind of walks through how you can bind that. Although they did actually now allow you to bind the keys in the um, game itself. Once upon a time, you had to bind it on your mouse, though. Okay. <laughs> so that was kind of annoying. Okay. So uh, is Daybreak fine? I don't know what your veto list looks like. Oh, I don't have any maps vetoed. Excellent. That'll work great. Okay, so we'll start with Daybreak. That seems to be a really good map to kind of represent. You know, kind of give a standard representation of the rest of the maps. Okay. So, uh, Terran. yeah. Don't want to work on TBT for now. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Great. Now, how are you with talking and playing at the same time? I know you did the... Um, I, I did the campaign just let's fine. Play is, okay. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So if it gets to be too much, let me know, and we can focus on the micro. But um, I tend to yak a lot while we're playing. If, if I notice anything, I'll point it out as we go. All right, sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously pretty used to, to uh, playing and, and talking, but not necessarily playing, like, uh, like really focusing a lot of, like, cognitive resources to a game and talking at the same time. Yeah. And that, that, that's part of it that, that might change. Because you already, as a standard, you, you hover around 150 to 200 APM. So I think you have the resources, so to speak, to be able to play at a master's level. That's really all you need to play at a okay. master's level. It's just a matter of putting those, those actions in the right places now. 
So, um, is it just me, or did they, like, grotesquely, like, bump up the APM algorithm for Heart of the Swarm? Because I remember in Wings of Liberty, I was getting, like, 100 APM, and now it says I've got, like, 200 APM or something like that, like, every game. Yeah. Um, for a while there, they locked down APM to only show effective actions. Okay. Um, so go ahead and whenever you watch a replay, if you want to see what it used to look like, check the effective actions per minute tab rather than the actions per minute. Okay. And it, you'll see, especially for a lot of spammers, you'll see it shrink down to like 60 when they were previously rocking 250. <laughs> Good. But technically the Brood War APM is what you're seeing today. So by that standard, they, they kind of decided to bump it back to where it was. Including spamming actions and uh, you know control grouping and things like that. Now we're gonna revisit your build order down the road. I don't want to do it this first uh, run through just because we're making some big changes as it is. Okay. Um, but just off the top of your head, what is your CBT build order? My ZVT is uh, for uh, well uh, now I'm reeling to you my strategy obviously it doesn't matter though but it's uh well, it's, I already know it I actually just want to know how well you know uh, it. okay it's uh 14 hatch 15 pool generally 16 extractor and okay. then and then from there uh it's kind of like no holds barred sometimes I go for sort of zergling baneling other times I go roaches and zerglings it's it's basically whatever I feel like okay. So, that's good. The important thing there is you know it. You can say it off the top of your head. Yeah. Um, and that's something that is healthy to stick with well into Diamond. One one build order per matchup until Diamond, I would say, is a good is a good uh, standard. Okay. Just because that allows you enough consistency that you can say, okay, based on what I saw, I know exactly what I need to do. And once you're Diamond or Master, then you can start branching out. So, you're not going to teach me, like, the one secret build order that, that destroys everything? No, Damn it. You, you need the uh, Zelnaga race to be able to pull that off, or the all Warhound race that was recently hinted at. That one's good too. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that. I'm, I'm, I know. I'll, I love going on like the. Uh, good catch. I love going on the uh, the uh, Zerg like the Zerg Battlenet forums because I mean, you know, I love you know, my fellow Zerg players, but we complain more than anybody else. Uh, at, yeah, Crybabies, absolutely. Yeah, and um, now uh, my suggestion, like some guy was complaining, like they needed to remove, you know, a certain thing, like widow mines or something, and I'm like, you know what they should do? They should just make every unit warhounds. That would solve every problem we're complaining about. It's just, it makes perfect <laughs> sense to me. Why not well, do no, it? No, that April Fool's Day thing was perfect. The logic was flawless. There's no way for people to complain about warhound balance yeah. if everyone has warhounds. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like really. What really, Blizzard? Why didn't you think of this sooner? Our forces are under attack. Whoops. That's all good. These things happen. I'll set my overlord on a suicide run. Oh, well, he gave his he gave his life for the greater good. So that's okay. Well, and it wasn't a waste. What information do you know from that? You have marines oh. <laughs> and a barracks. How many marines do I have? That's important. Uh, it was like five. Okay. Yeah, four, four or five. That that basically tells you what. That um, essentially, uh, I, I mean, you either going for some kind of early aggression, or you're just either I don't know defending your base, or I mean, it could it could be anything. Essentially, I feel like at this point, like, would you say I was on two racks with that production or one racks? I saw it. Okay, well, I would probably say two barracks. I think I saw an, I think I saw an extra barracks there. Okay. Yeah, make sure you don't assume unless you clicked on it. it I'll, okay. I'll tip you in. It was actually a factory for a, um, okay. well, I'll just say a transition. Um, oh, I wonder what the transition could be. <laughs> the uh, important thing to, to, I guess, take away from that is that when you see more than one or two Marines, you know that their Hellions are going to be a little bit delayed if they're making them at all. They might even go straight into Widow Mine. Okay. And that's a really good distinction to make because that opens you up to go ahead and take a quicker third potentially. It also allows you to gauge your roach transition, because I know you like to go into roach pretty quick, and you may be able to delay those a little bit in, in lieu of drones, and maybe even delay your gas a little bit. Okay. Okay. 
So, at what time would you recommend is a good time to think about getting a third, uh, a third base? Uh, you picked the hardest matchup for me to answer that question. Oh. Uh, ZBT, I would say anywhere from five minutes if you want to go, you know, really, really crazy with it. You could even do two hatcheries before pool if, if you're, you know, like cats. Cats loves to do that and he has quite a bit of success with it. Mm -hmm. Um... But generally speaking, if you don't see a lot of early pressure, you can go ahead and grab it by six minutes fairly reliably, or vice versa, you can go straight into mutas and grab it when your mutas have popped. Okay. Either of those. I don't want to give you really strict timings because I want want this to be kind of a broad strokes kind of lesson. Holy zerglings. Right, this is good. We're actually going to get a lot to talk about here uh, during the replay. Okay. I definitely know my APM is nowhere near as good as it uh, usually is, but that's because I'm trying to talk and you know, be entertaining as well as play a good StarCraft game. It is a tough balance to strike. I understand yeah. that wholeheartedly. You'll say a bunch of funny stuff and then lose the game and everyone's like, oh, this guy sucks and leave the stream. And it's like, oh, I didn't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> watching uh who is the guy it was like older stuff it was like uh destiny or something i was watching like some of his videos and i think honestly uh i think the dude's unbearable <laughs> yeah oh my god this guy is I, such a dick I, yeah he's he's a hard uh i mean even the times i played against him it's like really i expected better you know expected a little class yeah no he's he's a special case for sure He's a bit like Idra, he got his uh, kind of fame, I think, for saying for, outrageous for, for stuff. For being a dick? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to be as tactful as possible, but that's a good way to put it. Ah, uh, well. I got my fame for naming myself after a Russian dictator, so it's... it's... Stalinator, I, I have to say, it's, it's an amazing name. Really? Actually, you think so? Thank you. <laughs> I was actually laughing when I when I read that. I was like, did he seriously just call himself Stalinator? <laughs> we require more so, congrats on that. Yeah, I guess that's one thing I can respect to guys like that. They kind of uh, march their own tunes, so that's there's something to be uh, admired on that front. I feel. For... Well, and I think I, I I don't necessarily know. I'm not in their their heads. Uh, if you're referring to Idra and Destiny, yeah. Um, rather than Stalin, <laughs> um, I'm 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 not in Stalin's head either, though. But well, um, I am every day. Just... Oh well, yeah. I mean that stands to reason. You're Stalin Idra. Yeah. It's unavoidable. So the one thing that I try to kind of take keep in mind is these these guys are entertainers first. That's really where the money comes from from StarCraft these days, unfortunately. And so that may not be their personality. I mean, a lot of people they talk about Idra and they say he's the nicest guy outside of the game. Hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is something where that's a persona that they know is marketable. But that's just kind of my perception. I don't necessarily know that it's necessary to entertain people like that, though. Oh. Alright, so notice hatchery is all kinds of vulnerable, and yeah. I'm happy to see no drones here, although yeah. we'll see what we see in the replay, but um, when, you're, when your third finishes and you've already seen Hellions, maybe even if you haven't seen Hellions, you've got to have those spines up. Okay. I'd say two is healthy, but it really just kind of depends on what you see. How do you feel you're playing thus far? Uh, I'm feeling I'm playing mediocre, not the best in the world. But definitely, it's not my worst game I'll ever. Maybe it's because you're going easy on me. Um, I'm playing it what I would consider to be a level that should challenge you, but won't necessarily outright kill you right away. So I don't know if that was an effective trade or not, but... Uh, for you it was good. For me it was not so good. Okay. Kept your counts low, but um, 
Yeah, roaches handle pretty well. One thing you can really improve there is, is don't be afraid to kite back a little bit. Okay. You do technically have, I believe it's a one range. Let me double check. Uh, you have a two range advantage versus okay. um, versus the battle hellions. So that puts you in a pretty good place to go ahead and say, well, we can do a little micro and improve my unit efficiency. A bit. Okay. Honestly, I have never seen, I've never had a Terran go, uh, Helly, uh, hell bats or whatever they're called, the new units against me. Okay. I've never seen. I have not had one single Terran use it against me. Wow. Okay, you're gonna see it a ton, especially once you move up into platinum. Okay. There's gonna be guys who just get through every matchup, every game, by just making tons of hell bats really efficiently, and that's okay. all they do. Huh. So it will happen. Uh, eventually, they'll probably transition into like Tank Thor, Widow Mine, but that's only if what they're previously doing is not working. That's not good. Good timing for that meter transition, though. That helps a lot with this, because you're going to be able to shut down those uh, medevacs. The medevacs actually need to be your focus fire here. Okay. The medevacs now heal hellbats. That was a change. Do they? they actually, yeah. Well, that's no good. <laughs> when they changed the name from Battle Hellion to um, Hellbat, they also oh added that the medevacs can now heal them. Oh, okay. These units are pretty friggin'. They are amazing, huh? They they are pretty freaking devastating. They actually do a ton of damage to buildings, so they make a great choice for Terran players to go through and just like this, just focus fire all the tech. This is really what their late game's often going to look like, is just trying to make your multitasking cap out, and then after that, that's all pure damage, because you're unable to keep up. the hell am I researching burrow? <laughs> Just in case I transition out, I may move to something else. You never know. And that's going to be harsh. Okay. Well, I'm pretty much done at this point. Yeah, that tends to end the game. Okay, so yeah. that was actually a really great game for us to have for our first game. That's going to provide um, the template, so to speak, for all the following games we play today. Because we're okay. going to do a zoom from replay sure. every single uh, game. All right, so I guess we're going to go... Well, at least I leveled up from that game, so silver lining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on my Terran, so that's a good start. So okay. uh, before we jump into the replay, uh, just from your perspective, what do you think you could have done better there? Uh, one, my uh, macro was terrible. I had like 3,000 minerals saved up at some point which was uh, not so good. And uh, two, uh, well, uh, yeah, one or, or I got two or three, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter what order they come in. Um, one, I didn't do any well, harassment. I felt like I could have pushed at some point. Like I felt I had enough units to do some kind of aggression. And uh, three, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I, I was just kind of like randomly building units and, and randomly deciding, oh, I guess this is a good time to start upgrades. And I didn't really have, like, I had my set 
build order and then once that happens it's just uh just kind of do things whenever i feel like doing them okay yeah and that's kind of the impression i got from the replays was that after i'd say about the five minute mark it started to feel like there was no structure yeah it was just kind of like well we're seeing this so uh, let's make this i don't know if it's a counter but let's make it P pretty much <laughs> so that's what we're going to try and do and that's why you're working with such a small unit pool because you're going to be able to start to un understand the basics such as roach hydra performs really well mm -hmm. versus battle hellions or versus hellbats if i mistakenly call them battle hellions it's because i think hellbats is a stupid name it is a stupid um, name <laughs> so that's something that you can take from that because that initial aggression at your third you held really cost effectively mm -hmm. and it wasn't until the drops came into play and i started really pushing your multitasking to its limit that things started to go south so there's two things you can take from that number one the roaches perform really well versus hellbats number two you probably want to bump up that mutilus timing a little bit so that you're not vulnerable to the drops that are soon to follow okay okay and that's not always guaranteed maybe they'll open with drops but as a rule of thumb if you see hellions you're probably going to first off want to put an overlord through their base but 99.9% .9 of the time they're going to start incorporating medevacs because they heal those hellbats I didn't know that that's yeah <laughs> Do they, 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 okay so they don't heal hellions but they heal hellbats that's correct that doesn't make any sense well what blizzard I think what they were going for and the reason for the name change is because the firebat was a really cool unit so now they're finding a way to incorporate the firebat without actually adding it as a unit. So the hellion effectively turns into a firebat. I mean, the this, the numbers for the hellbat are really, really uh, on par with with the firebat, and, and right down to the range and the way they attack in a cone shape. That's all firebat. Okay, that still doesn't make, make any sense because aren't they mechanical units? Like they oh, don't no, they I don't know. become <laughs> biological when they transform. It's from a yeah, from a from a design perspective, I'm saying I can see their logic. I think it's really wonky, but yeah, yeah, it's it's like you're healing the pilot inside apparently, and every attack is somehow I, getting I, through I, all that armor. Okay, yeah. Well, By that logic, we should see Thor's siege tanks, widow mines, all well, no, maybe not widow mines. They don't have a pilot inside of them. But that's true. Who knows? <laughs> Anything with a biological component can now be healed by Medivex. It's a good balance. That would be terrifying, people. actually. <laughs> really bad. Turns out Colossus have this one little strand of DNA inside of them so they can be healed by medevacs in team play. I like how also I actually technically won that game because you left before I did. <laughs> well, now you can say you beat me. It's all good. Here we go. <laughs> all right. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to advance this replay to the point that I feel you lost. Okay. Uh, because the, we can really decide when you lost actually a lot earlier than maybe you would realize. So sure. we're going to just gradually improve your game literally from a time perspective and what, what, when, what do you mean from like a time like timing in the game or timing in reality or <laughs> okay great you're going all doctor who on me um okay so actual actual time in the game so we're going to be able to say okay from this point on uh you lost the game and then the next replay is going to be based on that so then we're going to be able to say okay from seven minutes on you lost the game and then from eight minutes on you lost the game and the final product is going to be a replay that you can then use as a template for all your ladder matches okay you're going to be able to look and compare against the replay and say i could have done this and that better okay so that was a 17 extractor yes i what like it you like it yeah let's actually i just want to make sure it's not the 16 because that that was the first thing i had in mind that i wanted to change so i'm going to Bounce back once. 21 supply. Okay, never mind. Yeah, actually, the hatchery or the pool feels late because that should have been a 17 extractor. So we're going to maybe even start this replay from the start of the build. I think this may have been a case where talking took over. Yeah, maybe you're right. Or maybe, I know, I, I think I started at 16, but I'm building drones, so it looks like it started at like 17. If you're spending this really tight, the build you're going for should Game start to. Game okay. Closed. So the pool is at game 60. Game okay. Game so let's, paused. first things first, you're super vulnerable to Reapers with that pool timing. Okay. So we're going to bump that up to a 15 pool. So the final build now is 14 hatchery, 15 pool. Okay. So actually, we're going to start from that point. But then I also, I'm trying not to change your build too much because I still want this to be your build. Oh, but I you can change my, I don't care. It's not like I have some kind of emotional attachment to my build. <laughs> Well, I just don't want to turn you into me, if that makes sense. I want you to develop. But your I own want voice. I want to be you. <laughs> okay, that's creepy. But, 
I, I do want this to be something where I help you develop your own play style rather than just telling you how to play like I would play. So we're going to wait until 15. Wow, you are at 16 for a long time. The back button yeah, aggravates me. It should be like 20 seconds rather than 10. Okay, sure. so here we are. You're at 245 minerals, and the hatch is about to go down. This is as good as any. Let's go up a little further. Replay management minus five for me. Okay, so now you're saving up for that hatchery. That's as good a time as any. Okay. okay so your your build now is 14 hatchery, 15 pool, okay. 17 extractor. Makes okay. sense? Yep, no, that makes perfect sense. Alright. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, we're, now we're playing. Holy crap. Playing. Yeah. Okay. Is that cool or what? I love that they added that. Yeah, that is pretty nifty. So, 